Welcome to an incredibly hot Thursday night. It's the NBL show, the only show that matters. Would you agree? Uh, definitely. On the only day of the week that matters, Thursday, Thursday night, despite the fact it is Tuesday evening. This week, as you can probably tell, draped in Honolulu blue, is the Detroit Lions episode, The Factory of Sadness. We're talking to the only Detroit Lions fan in the UK, Marek Larwood. Only one that we know of. Any Detroit Lions fans, make yourselves known to the event staff. They will see you safely to the scream zone where you can cry about your team's abysmal performance since 1991. But who knows what's going to happen because it's not just that. We're also going for the throwbacks. Rewrite. Week three. Desperate for a win. Sat at four and three with the Miami Dolphins staring down the barrel with a bye week next. They've got to win. They simply have to. But will they? <laughs> well, I, I'm sure we'll find out. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we, um, we know. I mean, we're just trying to fart some uh, excitement into it. But you don't. So let's go live to general manager and owner Chris, Chris Milner, Milner and head coach Hugh Coles. So we'll go to the throwbacks. Will they win it? Find out now. He's too good, man. How do you stop Ricky Williams? Planting drugs in his locker. I can just say I was in line <laughs> after. <laughs> that is something I thought, not Ryan. thought about. Offer them a fourth. Offer them a third. <laughs> Offer them a third. <laughs> Offer them a first. Mm. Scotchy, scotch, scotch. Always goes down smooth. It's, it's the... Coffee. Th what? It's coffee. It's coffee. I hope you're sitting down because I looked at the schedule and I looked at my video folder on my Mac and unfortunately I've lost the footage for two of the games. Now I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And there's even worse news. We beat the Saints and we lost to the Colts. So we've been swept by the Colts. We are currently sat at four and three. By week next week, but by first. By week next week, but first we'll play the Dolphins sat at three and three. Now here comes the bombshell. I opened up the injury report and Drew Brees has torn his Achilles and is out for 11 weeks. And if that's not bad enough, Algie Crumpler is also out. Not Algie, anyone <laughs> but Algie. I hope you'll agree with us that we cannot carry on with Rex Grossman, he's dreadful. So we're gonna get some trades going. We're currently 13th in the power ranking in the 2004 week seven. It's the throwbacks, let's launch into it. Let's rearrange this team. Trade a palooza. Trade a palooza. Part two, part two. Part deux. Part deux. Duh. Duh. Well, we're going we're going Tradesville first. You've got to replace Drew we Brees. Are, we are re-piecing together the shattered pot. Steve McNair, Michael Vick. Can we not say to the Falcons, you want to trade him now because he's about to get in a whole lot of trouble. Eli Manning, 79. There's, there's something inside of me that screams no. Chris Krenzel, the Krenz. Let's right. go shaking blade. Or Carson Palmer. Yeah, I reckon. Let's. I, I'm, I'm going to say Carson Palmer. 82. He sat behind John Kittner at 84. He's also aged 82. Well, it's, it's, it's his second year in this. Let's, let's go. We offer Steven Jackson for Carson Palmer straight up. Nope, they're not happy with that. Offer them a fourth. Offer them the third. <laughs> they second. want a third and a second. I don't know who they think they think they've got. Let's offer them draft picks. Oh, they want Calvin Pace. Counter with Calvin... And the third. And without the second. Without the second. God, the... Because the, the, they're, not, they're not getting what they want without <laughs> any concessions from me. No. All right, they're not having what they want. Okay. <laughs> Carson Farmer, we <laughs> stole him! <laughs> we got nothing that we wanted. Call the media team right now, tell, tell them to spin this somehow, but we won this trade. I, I think that any GM put in the position where starting quarterback, running back and tight end all get injured. You go into win now mode. Seventh. Nope. Sixth and seventh. Nope. <laughs> Fifth. Oh. What do you want? What do you want for Michael Strahan? Sandra. <laughs> Call the Giants, please. Send them a uh, gift basket full of human shit. The trade deadline is off. So what we can do is we can trade our first round for Michael Strahan. Let's do that. I think that's what any good... Um... Oh, oh my you... God! What, what do you want for Michael Strahan? Sandra, expedite that basket of turds. <laughs> I tried to trade away the house. I tried, no one wants the house. Kevin, that's Kevin Carter. Steve McNair. Carter and McNair. <laughs> it's a huge trade. It's well, a blockbuster. It's, it's a blockbuster trade. Ian Rappaport lose his mind. Carson Palmer, Steven Jackson, and a first. Let's do it. Call the Tennessee Titans front office and tell them we've got a proposal for them. Tell them to sit down and chill the champagne. What? 
<laughs> Why don't you want Carlson Palmer? He looks like a fried egg. Let's get the defensive end. First and a fourth. Fuck it, we're in win mount. In win win now, mode. we've traded away we've got all of no our picks. picks until the fifth round <laughs> of 2006. We've, we've bet the house on Carson Palmer, okay. Game plan, cross fingers. Say our jersey, Jason Taylor jersey, Ronnie Brown jersey, all in the rain. Junior say out, still very much alive. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling good about Carson Palmer. It's very early to call it now. Fine, at this point, we've given up a first round pick for a first down. <laughs> On the money. Fantastic. I don't want to speak too soon, but Carson Palmer is turning out very well for the throwbacks. Palmer merch is selling well already. <laughs> we want to continue that trend. I don't want it to be worthless in a few years oh. like the real Carson Palmer. Okay, Judas did Judas Jones. Jones just get stuffed again? Yeah, he's I on. I am counting. Minus four. Minus four running yards for the game. Warm up candidate. Oh. Warm up candidate now. There he is, Carter. Coming off. Now, where are you going? Stay on side. What is wrong with this? What is he, what's he doing? Why is he walking like that? Oh my God, Kevin Carter. Sandra, <laughs> get Kevin Carter on the trademark. Gamble is on the pitch. Always, always a risk of an interception when Gamble spread him out wide. Snake eyes. Come on, snakes. Oh, no, oh, no, no, snake eyes, no, 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 snake eyes. Oh, snake eyes, Gamble. It was so close to ecstasy. Why are they flying a blimp in this weather? It was an agony. <laughs> it seems like a poor decision. Yeah. Oh, it was Off that the killed him. It was, the, it was the jump afterwards. I was actually thinking how hard it must be to be a general manager because I'm already nervous. You're worried about what they can say to the press? Yeah, I'm, I am worried about the headlines tomorrow. I'll tell you what, Carson Palmer is throwing darts. Okay, come on, Carson. Oh, quick rollout, Carson. Come on. Hello. Oh, no! Okay, good, Andre Johnson. I don't know how to slide in this game. Yeah, you absolute... Oh Donkey. Oh my god. How have they got Ricky Williams and we've got Trung Candidate? <laughs> Can we sign her <laughs> as defensive end? <laughs> Statistically, I want us going for it more on fourth down. Not in this situation. Not in this situation. But in general, Sandra, send a memo down to the pitch. <laughs> You're in the skybox. Have, have you travelled with the team? or are I'm, you... in the, I'm in the blimp. That's the only reason. <laughs> I can't see anything. The only reason they've got it flying. <laughs> the I've, Hindenburg blimp. I forced them to go out in a storm. Our defensive end got pancaked. Watch him coming off the end here. <laughs> not if we block the pump. Steven Jackson! <laughs> oh, no. We're not used to the rain in Cali. Yeah, exactly. We play in a dome in Anaheim. I told you we should have an outdoor practice this week. Oh, my life. Who is at right tackle? Oh, Chris Gamble! Under draft Hugh Cole's resignation letter. Don't you dare. It's not the head coach. Can we put this into like real life? Midway through the week, the GM traded every <laughs> single pick and they're now, they're, they've got a zero on the scoreboard and it's 24 nothing at half time. Sean, well done, Sean. Come on, well Sean. Done, Sean. Ah! Spin. Oh. oh, good Lord, Sean got hit like Sean Taylor. Well, that's the half. We have a mountain to climb. We yeah. are at the table once again, National Vintage League. And this week we've done the Eagles who won a Super Bowl, and we thought we'd go the entire opposite direction and find the only Detroit Lions fan in the United Kingdom. It's star of your television set, an incredibly funny man. It's Marek Larwood, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be on the show. I'm still reeling. What, from the uh, DeAndre the Swift game. drop? Not just the drop, just the total collapse. Can you swear on this show? Yes, go as much I'm as you just want. just sick of that pencil-headed prick already. <laughs> Not being able to coach a side. So I've just, I've recently moved back to the Isle of Wight and I don't have anyone to talk to. So, <laughs> so you're going to get all your Lions frustration out now. But I appreciate no. that you've fully done out the whole thing in Honolulu blue Detroit Lions gear and wearing the Charlie Batch, which is one of the more niche jerseys you could own. I chose to wear uh, Jurassic Park today because the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, like Lions players, often get released. I mean, there was a time when we just basically didn't sign the best players to any decent contracts. Like Sue, or like Kevin Johnson, they just and Barry Sanders, you know, best two players arguably of the Detroit Lions history. Just think, I'd rather do nothing. I would rather go on Strictly Come Dancing than play for the Detroit Lions. Quite like Jim Caldwell, who was the first pair of safe hands the Lions had in ages. Matt Patricia just got last season to nine wins, and he has lost so many more than Jim Caldwell did. And you ousted Jim Caldwell because he was crap. Because ironically, the plays he called 
weren't called well. And that's the first joke that of the episode, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Crowbar, there we go. Is. Can you tell me why it is so tough to find Lions fans in the UK? I think yeah, in the UK you get sort of peaks of fans, don't you? Some teams are always cool, like the Raiders. Bears. Everyone who thinks, yeah. Wait, uh, uh, <laughs> I know that's hard for you to say, Marek, but let's be honest, Bears is one of them. The only team I think with less fans in the UK than the Lions is probably the Tennessee Titans. I the never Buccaneers see any of don't have fans. that many fans, but I just can't, apart from you, I don't, like, and we know all our customers at the back of our hands. Can you tell me another Detroit Lions you customer? Need, you need to be a masochist to be a Detroit Lions fan. That's why you don't see any, because they're all chained up in BDSM sex dungeons. Well, I, I, I'm starting to dispute that. <laughs> um, in terms of, have you done a list of your sales of the clubs, which is the most popular and least popular in the yes. UK? I mean, we, must, tell you. we know what we do, of, of whence we speak, sir. I'd say the only team that sells less than the Detroit Lions is the Indianapolis Colts. Really? Yeah. A huge swell of fans. They usually gravitate to someone who's successful at the time. Right. So like you had a lot of Seahawks fans and now there's a big Seahawks didn't you? because they were great in the Legion of Boom. Which makes it surprising why we have such a big following for Jacksonville. Yes. Let's go back to arguably the worst thing in Lions history. Let's talk Matt Millen. I came in again in 2009, 2010, just as he was getting as after his succession of the worst draft picks ever. Yeah, Roy finished. Williams, Mike Williams, yeah. Ch just Charles Rogers, RIP. Just get a rece receiver and it, yeah, exactly. Let's pick four it, receivers in five drafts and we still keep missing and missing and missing. I mean, that screwed over the team for years. I would say what upsets me the most is the refs. I definitely think it's... It, Bias against the Lions. So it's the referees. Yeah. 2014, one of our few playoff games against the Cowboys, of course, winning in 2017. The ref actually threw a flag for pass interference on Brandon Pettigrew. And then he just picks up and went, oh, no, no, no. Well, no, actually, it's the Lions. No. <laughs> oh, so do you look at the scoreboard? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's. Um, I didn't realise the Cowboys were losing and no one. Yeah, we'll just ignore that. Hey, Pete, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And you know it. You know it is, though. How does that get overturned? How does that get overturned? Congratulations. It's unbelievable. Can we explain that or no? Just flat out overturning a pass interference call? I've never in the history seen one turned over. Congratulations, man. First time in the history that's happened. And against the Packers last year, we we're winning again. And then the refs just called face mask when there wasn't even, there's no, the player always had his hand behind his back. And it was what? And the two successive plays, and they come back and win. The, the call, I mean, the refereeing against us is so bad, especially against the big teams. Against the Lions, if we, talk, if we play the Cowboys, if we play the Packers or someone big in an important game, and the referee is atrocious. <laughs> we can't beat the other team and the refs. You sound like a Saints yeah. fan. I went to Detroit to watch the Lions. Oh, did you? At Four Field? Obviously, at Four Field. They weren't playing in a car park somewhere. As far as I could see, everyone was drink driving. Oh, really? Just get off their face. Just throwing beers at the back of my Dolphins fans' heads. So the Tigers Stadium is right next to the Lions Stadium in the middle of Detroit. So are you a baseball or a hockey or a basketball man? Dodgers are my baseball team and then the 76ers are my basketball team. So I don't, do you just I'm not loyal teams to teams based on the colour blue? Definitely. I look like blue. That's my main <laughs> motivation. Marek has invented a game called Poo Man Cards. You invented it because your nephews and nieces, you were fed up with chasing them around the house, right? My nieces and nephew just shout at me, oh, can we play monsters? And every, every uncle knows it. Basically, tend to be a monster and chasing screaming kids around the house for up to eight hours. <laughs> this is the actual game. Poo Man's a hand, look at that. Right. Mate, I think this is so genius. Some of the names. Have you got there Lionel Longlog? There, there he is, Lionel, Lionel Longlog, Long straight off the top. Burtox. Oh, Poo Man. Oh, you got Poo Man. Uh, Penelope Yellow Pea. <laughs> You've got 10 black cards at the end of it. So basically, when you're sick of chasing the kids, you say, I oh, know, why don't you, um, Sit down and draw your own cards for um, two hours. Never speak to me again. Pooman.co.uk. Head to pooman.co.uk and pick up some Pooman cards. Yeah. I think pooman.com is some dodgy site. <laughs> <laughs> so Do not go to pooman.com. Don't, don't send your kids to Pooman. <laughs> Right, 24 nothing. The throwbacks must win. Oh, look at that. Touchdown, touchdown, field goal, touchdown. He promised Let's me. Give him a chance. Sean Taylor. That's two picks for Sean. There we go. And the dunk. Okay. Yes, Devery Henderson. Henderson to the house. Throwbacks are on the board. The comeback for the ages is on. I'm going to come clean now. Neil Rackers is only still on the team because he's an excellent drinking buddy. <laughs> 
GM and the kicker have been sinking tequila slammers yeah. in the a, blimp. We have, a, we have a very Ursay McAfee relationship. If, you're, um, if your office is in the blimp, how do you cut players? No, the blimp's just how I get to and from the office. Oh, I see. So the office isn't inside the blimp. No, the office is in another blimp. Oh, Carson's on the phone. Back home. To me. <laughs> to you in the blimp. <laughs> Uh, Sandra, put me in touch with uh, Carson on the sideline, please. That's better, Chris Gamble. You don't want to be giving it up, but you do want to be tackling him rather than just jumping in the air. Oh, my life. Fucked. He's too good, man. How do you stop Ricky Williams? Planting drugs in his locker. Sandra. <laughs> I'm going to say that they're going to run it again here. I would if I was them. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Oh, oh well, Brian Dawkins. Called that one like a blind man at night. <laughs> Um, I think the media are going to have an absolute field day. The head coach has no idea what he's doing. The GM is riding around in a blimp. I'm just going to start leaning out the window and start pissing on my own team. That's not rain, Hugh. <laughs> 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 oh, there's lightning, yet they're still playing. That is health and safety issues right there. The mood is sour in the Wells Fargo sky blimp. <laughs> are you the only one in the sky blimp? No, Sandra's here. Oh, <laughs> literally just you and Sandra. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Sandra, I think we should try and beat the traffic. <laughs> even though we're in a sky blimp. Sandra's also the pilot of the sky blimp. Yeah, so Sandra, <laughs> turn it around. Oh, you can't stop Ricky Williams. He's so good. Are they running the clock down? They don't need to. Just give us a chance. Oh my god. Okay. Our defensive line is like a sheet of Rizzler. What's the what's the NFL record? Or how bad a team can be. I don't know. Well, that's Marrick. Hugh, <laughs> <Yeah, that's> <laughs> if I can get the Florida Aviation Authorities to sign off on flying a blimp in a lightning storm, you can get something out of this team. Sandra, can you see if Matthew McConaughey is available for a bi-week pep talk, please? One coach and five players. Sick jacket. That's an awesome jacket. It's a Reebok touchdown, baby. Oh, he's, oh, he's thrown a... That wasn't a touchdown. That was the opposite to a touchdown. <laughs> Try and candidate up the gut. Easy. Perfect. Sandra, leak a story about Michael Strahan in the media. Right. So as Hugh and I speed back to Anaheim in the Wells Fargo star blimp. We, we leave the team for dead to be eaten alive by the Miami media. I'm going to say we shouldn't have played that game because I of agree. lightning. I that, agree. Is, that is kind of disgraceful that we actually played that. We will round off our Lions chat on the Factory of Sadness episode with a game craftily entitled Lion... Or lion. I want to play now, please. <laughs> <laughs> Marek Larwood, you got to tell me if these facts about the Detroit Lions are factual, in which case they're lion, or I'm lying, in which case I am lion. Probably Kicking... shouldn't have used exactly the same, the same sounding word, word yeah. for yeah. each one. I can just say I was said lion <laughs> after. <laughs> that is something I thought not lion. thought about. This is why no one has ever played this game on any Detroit Lions. <laughs> There's no sophistication right in this. Yeah. Pooh man, this is not. Question number one. The Detroit Lions are the only NFC team to have not yet appeared in a Super Bowl. Am I lying or is that lion? Lion, that's, tr that's true. That is true. Well done, Marek Larwood. Marek one, Larwood. Zero. one on the board. That is uh, a better start than any of the Detroit Lions teams over the last seven years. One and oh. Question number two. Barry Sanders never missed the Pro Bowl. Ooh. Did he go to the Pro Bowl every single year he was in the league? Was he injured for one? That is eighth year or something. I think he was injured for one of them. It's a lie. Well, I'm just saying, please oh, specify. Lie, lie. I'm spending it. I'll spend it. I think he missed one year. Lie, lying. That is Detroit Lion. He uh, went to the Pro Bowl every single did year. He? he did. We're at one and one with wow. Marek Larwood. Much more familiar territory. Question number three. The Detroit Lions have only had a double digit win five times since 1957. I think it's li lie. We must have had more than five. Lying, lying, lying. And Marek Larwood's Detroit Lions move to one in two because the Detroit Lions have only had five double-digit wins since 1957. That is a shock. And that is the look of a Detroit Lions fan. <laughs> I mean, that is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. One plus three plus two one is three. Four. Barry Sanders had his jersey retired 
before he finished playing in Detroit. Is that a Detroit Lion or a Detroit Lie? That'd be, that would have been a better been name better, for the game. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I think it's true. Yeah, lying, lying. We move to one in three. That is a Detroit lie. It was in fact Barry Sanders who retired whilst he was still playing. That fact is actually true of Bradley Wright Phillips of the New York Red Bulls. He has somehow become a celebrity and star of the franchise in the MLS, but he had his jersey retired while still playing for the New York Red Bulls, an honor that even Thierry Henry didn't get. How many questions? Can I have a winning season? Can I get back to winning or not? Oh yeah, you can. We've got nine questions. Moving on to question number five. You don't get a bye week, unfortunately, Marriott. You're playing straight You're through. You're going straight through, all away games. Okay. In 2008, the Detroit Lions started the season three and five. 2008. 2008. And 2008 when they lost, when Owens Could lying, be. lying. Correct. Well Detroit done. lie. It was actually Michael Vick's prison intramural team that went three and five in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a fact I want to like just dwell upon. I don't know how I found that last night, but who did the other teams have? If his team went three and five with yeah. Mike Vick, like <laughs> the other, like just imagine the longest yard. One team has Michael Vick, and they managed to lose. I'm trying to think of the name for the. What would the name of the film of Michael Vick's prison team be? be? Oh no, <laughs> Michael Vick's losing prison team, and there's a film. It's got to rhyme with Vick, isn't it? It's got to be some sort of prison Vick thing. Convict. 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 <laughs> yes, convict. <laughs> so we're looking to get 500. Yeah, you're looking Come to, on, let's to get the first winning season ever. Question number five. I've just realised how much is riding on this. Yeah, this, this a lot is riding this on this. This is you're you're standing for the whole Lions nation. Right? Question number <laughs> six. At two and three. Detroit Lions fans were once asked by the referees to shut up because they were cheering too loudly. It has been noisy there. Yeah, I think that's Lion. That is Detroit Lion. The Detroit Lions, in on December 21st, 1997, during the game in which Barry Sanders got 2,000 yards, the Detroit Lions fans in the Silver Dome were so worked up and yelling so loudly that Neil O'Donnell for the New York Jets um, remembered an old rule where he went up to the refs and went, I, I, I can't hear what I can't hear my offensive line and they can't hear what I'm calling, so I'm not going to play until you tell them to quiet down. So the refs went on the mic and said, you guys need to be quiet, to which the Lions fans got even more rowdy and they tried to do another play and then the refs got the uh, defense together and said, you guys are going to need to calm down your fans or else we're going to penalize you with a timeout. Here, this quietly. You like a church. Now the Lions defense motioning to the crowd now. We have asked the defensive team for assistance. If the noise persists, the defense will be charged with a timeout. So that is Detroit Lion. We're at three and three. Three and three. Got to hold on to the end of the season. Three questions to go. You and need at least two of these. The Detroit Lions are the only NFL team to have had a losing season, a completely losing season. Detroit Lie or Detroit Lion? The only team to go 0-16. Didn't the Browns go 0-16? Yeah, so Lie, Lion. And into the promised land leadeth Marek Larwood. We're sat four and three. This is unbelievable. Two questions to go. We can still end up with a losing season. Six and three. Playoffs, right? Yeah, six and three is playoffs. Okay, so if you get yeah. these two right, you're going to the playoffs. Yeah. Detroit Lions once find a player $7,500 for flipping off the crowd. True or false? Yeah, I think that someone did. So I think it's Lion. That is Detroit Lion. Oh, and we've got a winning season. Who was it? Was it the player? What was the name of the player? Hey. In 2008, centre Dominic Riola, not wide receiver. Oh, Dominic Riola? Yeah. I didn't think it was he him. He expressed else. zero remorse that uh, for an event that happened in a 20 to 16 home loss to the Vikings because he flipped off the crowd and he told the reporters that his lone regret was that he wished he could invite the fans to his house to physically fight him. Riola's reasoning for not doing so was he thought they might show up with guns. Nobody plays with fists in Detroit, he lamented. Everyone wants to play with metal. Pretty nice place. Come to Detroit. <laughs> nice guy, nice place. <laughs> to win the first. What a way this would end. Oh. But also, if he gets it wrong, that would be also pretty typical as well. In 1970, Marvin Gaye tried out for the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lie or Detroit Lion? 
for the first playoff win in Detroit Lions history. Marvin Gaye, did he try out for the Detroit Lions? I think I read something about this. I think I read something about this somewhere. With no lifelines. Can I phone Marvin Gaye's dad? <laughs> I say yes, he lion. He did try out for the Lions. Marek Lawrence got his final playoff game! His final playoff game! <laughs> Detroit Lions have won a playoff game. Redemption! Redemption! Redemption. Sweet redemption! The chains are rattling. Yeah, in 1970, singer Marvin Gaye bolted up nearly 30 pounds and trained with future Hall of Fame receiver Charlie Sanders while preparing for his tryout. He didn't make the cut, but remained close with several players who then sung the backing vocals on What's Going On. Look at that. It's Matt Patricia. <laughs> Marek Larwood, the king and only Detroit Lions fan in the UK. Greatest. Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm really pleased. We came back from one and three. <laughs> one and three to six and three. So there you have it. The Detroit Lions won a playoff game at this very table. When's the last time you saw the Lions do a playoff win? Name it. 1991, Marek Larwood, absolute king. Go and buy Pooh Man cards on pooman.co.uk. Not com. Not com. Can't stress that enough. Do not go to pooman.com. That is a different website. But if you do, please obviously sub uh, me and donate to my tip jar. Thank you. That's, that was a very good joke. I enjoyed that one. Thank you. And so the Detroit Lions are winning playoff games. Throwbacks can't buy a win. We are going on to a frosty bye week back in Anaheim. As we, the GM and the head coach, fly off in the Wells Fargo blimp back to the Wells Fargo Center, avoiding all questions from the baying media. Will they win? Can they turn it around? Find out next week on the only show that matters, on the only day of the week that matters. It's Thursday night. It's the NVL show. We're just here so we don't get fined. Brilliant.